Well, hello! Welcome! Welcome back! Good to see you all here. I'm glad you can make it. You might recall that we all joined Sean the Sheep and his little sister Shiri on their vacation the week before we were in France, and, and this past week we have been in Italy, visiting Rome, Florence, Milan, Pisa, and now Venice. Everything's been a lot of fun, very interesting, just having a great time without any negative incidences. Well, maybe one. Sean thought it was a Lamborghini. Si sono impadroniti. And Pope Francis was very forgiving. Siendo tutto di un silenzio assordante e di un vuoto desolante. We're just uh, waiting on the uh, train to arrive to begin our journey across Europe to Istanbul on the Orient Express. For this series, we're asking the question, who is in control of everything? The answer, of course, is God is in control of everything in heaven and on earth. The Israelites had been taken as prisoners to the land of Babylon because they had abandoned God and worshiped other gods. God had saved his people and returned them to the promised land. Now, rebuilding after a disaster is never easy. It's hard work and a lot can happen. Let's see what does happen. Check this out. God's people had lived in Babylon for 70 years. Then King Cyrus, the king of Persia, took over Babylon and let them go home. Some of God's people went to Judah, but some of them stayed. Nehemiah stayed and worked for the king of Persia. One day, some men came from Judah. Nehemiah asked, how are God's people doing in Jerusalem? The men had bad news. The people are in trouble. The walls around Jerusalem are broken down and the gates have been burned down. Nehemiah cried. Then he prayed and fasted. The king noticed Nehemiah and asked, What's wrong? Why are you sad? Nehemiah was afraid. No one was supposed to be sad around the king. Nehemiah said, The city where my ancestors are from is in ruins and the gates of the city have been burned down. The king sent Nehemiah to Jerusalem. Nehemiah inspected the walls and led the people to start rebuilding the walls and gates. The workers put in doors, bolts, and bars. They cut stones and lifted them into place on the wall, and they filled in gaps and holes. All around the city, People worked side by side. Soon, the wall was half as tall as it had once been. Not everyone was happy that Jerusalem's walls were being rebuilt. Some men who lived nearby were angry. God's people kept working on the walls, but their enemies made a plan to attack them and stop their work. God's people prayed and chose men to guard the walls all day and all night. But the people were discouraged. Our enemies are everywhere, they said. Nehemiah reminded the people that God was with them. Don't be afraid. God is great and powerful, Nehemiah said. Be ready. If our enemies attack us, God will fight for us. Enemies could threaten God's people, but they could not make God's people stop building. Their enemies were not in charge of rebuilding the wall. God was. 
So God's people went back to work. Some stood guard with weapons and others worked on the wall. Some men worked with one hand and held a weapon in the other. They were always ready to fight, just in case. Nehemiah was a wise and good leader for God's people while they worked. In just 52 days, the wall was complete. The gates were repaired and the wall was restored. When all of Jerusalem's enemies heard that the wall had been rebuilt, they were afraid because they knew God was with his people. Nehemiah led the people to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem to protect them from their enemies. Jesus came to protect us from our greatest enemy, sin and death. He died on the cross and rose from the dead to rescue everyone who trusts in him. God used Nehemiah to rebuild the Jerusalem walls. The Jewish people had enemies all around them. There were enemies who wanted to attack them, enemies who made fun of them, enemies who lied about them, who tried to frighten them, enemies who tried to discourage them from doing God's work. There are people in this world who may or may not be enemies, but they are still used to hinder us from doing God's work. They will make fun of you for what you believe about what God says in the Bible and what Jesus teaches. They will try to scare you into being silent, not speaking the truth about the Christian faith, and for not doing things you know you should do in order to obey God. If you ever felt scared to speak the truth, or felt fearful about doing the right thing, you aren't the only one. It happens to all of us at times. But notice what they did in the story of Nehemiah. They prayed to God. They prayed to God for strength. They prayed to God for encouragement. They prayed for protection. They prayed for help. And God helped them. Their prayer worked. If you ever feel scared or discouraged to speak the truth about your faith, about doing the right thing, remember that God is with you. Prayer works. Because they prayed to God, God helped them accomplish what He wanted them to accomplish. He gave them what they needed to be obedient to His Word. But what about the enemies of the people of God? When they saw what the people accomplished, they became scared. They backed down from their attacks, lies, and threats. The enemies weren't scared of the walls. They weren't scared of the people of God. They were scared of God. They were scared because they knew God was working through the people to accomplish His task. When we're obedient to God, when we pray to Him for help, God can accomplish amazing things. But even if we do pray and obey God, will it be an easy task? Check this out. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Oliver from Johnson City, Tennessee asks, Does God protect us today? Oliver, yes he does. Uh, God protects us, but you know, we're gonna have to unpack what it means that he protects us in a second. You know, we see in today's Bible story, the story of Nehemiah, how God led his people back to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the city walls in, in an amazingly quick period of time, by the way. Why this was significant was this. First of all, it's God making good on his promise to get his people back into the land, but also the city walls were for protection. Uh, this was the way that God's people would be safe from enemies and also it was a way to show the people around Israel that God was with his people. He was not leaving them vulnerable and exposed. And so that's what the city walls represented, protection from harm. So God protected his people then, he protects us today. Now what does that mean? That does not mean that nothing bad will happen, that nothing difficult will happen, that you will never get hurt. 
Sometimes God even brings pain into our lives. He brings hurt into our lives because it's the greatest good for us. You know, discipline hurts, but God is a loving Father who disciplines us so that we can follow Him better, we can obey Him better. It's actually for our good that we're disciplined. So there's this one case where if we think of protection as being, you know, never experiencing pain, never experiencing difficulty, no, that's not the case. Think of Jesus. Jesus suffered, didn't he? He died. That was all part of God's good plan. So why do we think that God will shield us from all pain when he didn't even shield his son from all pain? But here's what protection means. It means ultimately God protects us from the ultimate consequences of our sin, separation from him, and spiritual death. And it also means that at times he will protect us on earth from things that are painful. That he'll protect us at times from things that would bring us harm. But we, again, we just can't count on that being every single time. So here's a question back for you to think about. Can you think of a time when God protected you in the past? Our verse for this series comes from 1 Peter 5.10. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And just as in our story today, if we pray to God, God will restore us, encourage us, save us, make us firm and steadfast for his work. And that's because God is in control of everything in heaven and on earth. This train whistle. I guess it's all aboard. Before we go, let's say a prayer. Bow your head, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you can keep us firm and steadfast in your work. That you will see us through difficult times so that we can accomplish your work. Help us to pray to you. Help us to not be scared. Help us to do your work no matter what people may say or what people may do. Help us to be conformed to your word and to your work in this world. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. All aboard the Orient Express. <laughs>